Hey everyone, I'm Angus. And I'm Ashley. Today we are at the RSF Aero Medical Center to find out more about what are the type of training that our aircrew have to go through. Come, follow us. Guys, now we are at the hyperbaric chamber whereby a group of aircrew are already inside going through the entire sequence to understand what hypoxia feels like, which is the lack of oxygen while at a high altitude. So we have uh, Dr. Randy here with us now. And so what are some of the things that um, an air crew actually has to go through? Um, during APT, there are several stations. Um, one of them is the hypobaric chamber. So in the hypobaric chamber, what happens is that we expose them to a condition known as hypoxia. So in this chamber, what we do is to expose them to 25,000 feet. And that is just slightly below the, the height of Mount Everest. At that level, um, at the altitude, our air crew will actually experience what the lack of oxygen feels like. Because every individual actually has a different onset of symptoms when they experience hypoxia. So over here, uh, we have the normal flow and emergency flow. So if they experience symptoms of hypoxia, the air crew are supposed to switch it to emergency flow, followed by the white color panel whereby they're supposed to switch from normal oxygen to 100% oxygen. Should that not work, and the symptoms of hypoxia still persist, they will have to then activate the emergency oxygen bottle by pulling the green apple. Okay, Dr. Randy, I see this pair of gloves here. Um, did someone leave it here? Well, actually, um, no one left it here. At ground level, the, the glove is actually inflated to this size, but as the chamber decompresses, this glove, something like a balloon, will actually expand. Yeah, it's to show the participants that actually they're ascending. 25,000 feet is about one third the, the atmospheric pressure compared to ground level. So the, the balloon or this glove will actually expand in size. Okay, Leslie, could you tell us uh, what were you doing inside here just now? Okay, so basically it simulates uh, rapid decompression in the aircraft. This is helpful to me because if in flight I do experience all these symptoms, I uh, straight away will know that perhaps I'm in hypoxia. Uh, straight away I can put on the oxygen to prevent myself from being incapacitated in flight. You know the worksheet just now or something yeah. that there were some mathematical questions yeah. or some English question. Uh, yeah, we did that. You have a rough sense on how well your brain is working at a high altitude when your brain tends to work slower than uh, it should usually. Part of uh, experiencing the kind of symptoms that you might uh, experience when you are in hypoxia. Hey, hey, I'm over here. Can you see me? Over here, we are in the place called the Air Force Night Vision Integrated Lab. This is the place whereby we introduce our air crew to night vision operations in almost pitch black darkness. Um, doctor, is this how dark it is normally in the room for this? Okay, certainly not. You will normally be conducted when it's so dark. Yes, and the only light source available is the light from the moon and the cultural lighting that we want to simulate. So we use the terrain board to train our air crew to understand the limitations that the night vision goggle has when they are using it. So the terrain board simulates the typical type of terrain that our air crew have to fly over. So you can see that there are hills, areas of vegetation, there's also flat areas and there's uh, build up areas. Using this terrain board, we can generate various visual effects. If the moon is uh, low on the horizon behind the hills, when they are flying with the night vision goggles, uh, which do not have a perfect visual acuity like what we are accustomed to in the day, they may not see the lower foothills located in the shadows of the taller hills behind them. So they may fly the helicopter all the way, thinking that they are still far away from the taller hill behind, and they'll fly directly into the terrain because of the shorter hills that they don't see. Uh, we also have power lines simulated on the terrain board. Uh, to give them the understanding that although they are wearing night vision goggles and such power lines are clearly visible in the day, through the night vision goggles, you really do not see the power lines. During my short session here at Anvil, I was exposed to the challenges of night operations. Everything from the sky looks really small and it, when there's different types of illumination such as um, full moon or even no moon at all, the terrain could seem very different and that really it's kind of things that this room is able to simulate for our air crew to be able to let them understand limits of night vision operations. The next station is if they need to ever eject from the aircraft, we also have an ejection seat trainer and that will actually expose them to about 15 times the force of gravity and during this session we actually teach them the proper techniques of ejecting so that they can eject safely if ever there's a need to. So now I'm waiting for my turn on the ejection seat trainer where the aircrew will actually mimic an e actual ejection. So, kind of nervous but we will see how it goes. Hopefully everything is okay. He doesn't chill eh? Yeah, I did. Yeah, right. So this is at 4G. A normal ejection is actually 12 to 15. 
So for our ejection seat training, we have to make sure that the air crew is able to put the head firmly against the headrest even when the ejection process has been initiated and the arms are firmly tucked to your side. Mm. So when I look at your performance, there seems to be no head movement and no arm movement. So I'm sure you have searched, you will survive the ejection well. <laughs> Actually from what I heard from you guys, right, an actual ejection will go up to like 12 to 15 G. So for training purposes, it's only up to 4 G. Right. But I could really feel like uh, the force uh, pushing my head forward. So it really takes a lot of focus to actually push my head back. So I think this is like a good way to train our air crew and like let them know like what needs to be done in the actual ejection. I think the most challenging portion is the spatial disorientation trainer. In flight, especially when we enter thunderstorm clouds or weather, there's a high tendency for us to be spatially disoriented. This is basically your body telling you that you are flying in a certain way, but uh, in reality, uh, you are not. We always have to remind ourselves to you know, fall back to our flight instruments and always trust the flight instruments and not tr trust the, uh, the sensation that your body is trying to tell you. So now I'm going to the SDT to experience some of the profiles that our aircrew will be flying inside here. Okay, and we are going to approaching 100, I'm rotating to get airborne. So I'm holding about 15 degrees pitch. Aircraft start to get airborne right now. Maintaining this attitude. After getting airborne, I'm going to retract the undercarriage and the plus maintaining my pitch angle. disorientation trainer and it's way cool to be inside it's like being in the pilot seat right in the cockpit the trainer went through all the different types of motions that um, an air crew would possibly go through and in this particular profile I could sense that the whole world around me was just starting to revolve felt really disorientating to be inside it really that's the kind of training that our air crew have to go through just to ensure that they are safe in flight really good job to uh, our air crew as well as all the trainers here in ARMC to be able to allow our air crew to train in a very safe environment to know what exactly goes up in the air so that they can come home safely each time round. So good job guys. So how do you think we did overall? I think all of you did very well. You are all ready to be trained as an air crew. <laughs> See you next time and come back to the RSF Aeromedical Centre and I'm sure you want to try 9Gs in the central pitch. Okay. 10,000 shares and I'll do it, okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.